coming up yeah yeah i wanna i wanna i wanna go right into that as time you guys have been very lengthy um we want to go in the combat corner and discuss that ufc 300 is coming up it seems like we may be watching it all together actually we may not nick has a family engagement so he will not be at the party i was the watch ready party. to come man next week is and, it gonna um, a, it's gonna i'm sorry i'm sorry dude. it's gonna be something else the following week no not ufc not is not UFC every week, week. No, not, it's every not, week, but it's not, not and that's not something that's good. A, it won't be something good. Yeah, okay. and it's not right. a premier fight. Okay. Um, and the and the the hundred fights are huge. Hundred, the two hundred was a huge fight. So three hundred, I think it's getting people excited, and it's not going to live up to the hype. But either way, Rudy, um, what do you what are your takes? What are your thoughts? UFC three hundred. UFC three hundred. This was the worst promoted fight card ever. Worst put worst put together fight card ever. I think they paid Jamal Hill a whole lot of money to magically get healthy because he had been saying he would not be healthy by April to fight this fight. And then all of a sudden, he is the fighter taking on Alex Pereira in the light heavyweight championship fight. Um, I am a big Pereira fan. I think he will knock Hill stone cold out. Um I don't think it's going to be all that entertaining, to be honest. Uh, the card itself, I think some of the undercard fights are better than the main card fights. The, the Zhang Wei Li fight versus Zhang Jianan for the women's uh, strawway title. They should have run that fight in China. It is not of interest to people in the U.S., realistically. It would have been the perfect fight for a card in, in um, I know they, they brought cards to China before or country, I don't know if they brought to Hong Kong or, but they would have been better in, in, in Asia because that would have been bananas over there. Over here, it's a co-main event and I think Zhang Wei Li's gonna run the, wipe the floor with her. Now, Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway for the BMF title, which I think is the corniest nonsense on earth created to make Jorge Masvidal important with that Nate Diaz nonsense. And then they ran in uh, the Dustin Poirier version against Justin Gaethje, and Gaethje gets the win. Gaethje's fighting Max Holloway. I don't think Max Holloway has a chance in hell of being Justin Gaethje. I think it'll be a fun fight, but I don't think it's going to be a competitive fight. And and that's part of the problem with this card, is that they pieced it together so poorly, and they were desperate. Because they, they, at times they run, they put too many title fights on certain cards, and then they, they like, there's no reason that Drikas Duplessis is not on this card. You know, he should have been on this card. Um, I think it would have been the perfect time. I think he should have been rematching Sean Strickland, because I thought Strickland won that first fight. Now, you have Charles Oliveira with Armand Saruki, and that's a good fight. That's a real good fight, actually. That, that's going to be a hell of a fight. But then they want to do this corny nonsense, putting Bo Nickel on the main card. Bo Nickel? That's ridiculous. Like, that's the stuff that pisses me off. You're wasting... People are paying to watch this shit. I'm not paying to watch Bo Nickel against Cody Brundage. Like, that Brundage, Brundage that's just silly. He's a... Nick, he's a minus 3,000. Minus 3,000. On the main card. Minus 3,000. So, I mean, he has... That means, he, that means he walks into the cage and the guy lays down and goes to sleep. Yeah. Like, that's how they're treating that fight. And that's on the main card. Now, there's some prelim fights that are sick. Yuri Prohaska, Alexander Rakic. Mm -hmm. That's a great fight at light heavyweight. Great, great fight. The winner is probably going to face the winner of the Hill Pereira fight. Um, Pereira already beat Prohaska when they fought. Calvin Cater versus Aljo, Aljamain Sterling. That's a fun fight. That's a real fun fight. Let's see how Aljo does at 145 and yeah. does have to cut a million pounds to get down there. Now, will he still be the human backpack at 145? I don't know. But he beats Calvin Cater. He's up for a title shot. Like, he'll be up for a title shot real fast if he wins this fight. Because there's not a whole lot of guys. You know, you have um, Taporia is going to fight Volk again. Taporia beats Volk again. It's hard to keep K Aljo out of this conversation. You know... Now, Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. That's an interesting, fun fight because Harrison never fought uh, Nune, you know, Amanda Nunes. And now she's fighting Holly Holm. 
she's going to cut 20 pounds more than her 55 fights at PFL and fight at 135. I have my I have a feeling that she's going to weigh in at like 142, 143, and this turns into a catch weight at 145. I yeah. have this feeling because I don't see how like, – Kayla Harrison is built like a brick. She is absolutely yoked. I don't know where you're pulling 20 pounds off of her body. Because when she weighed in at 155, she looked drawn in. I think she's weighed in at 45 once. 10 more pounds. If she actually gets to 35, first, I think Holly Holmes is going to beat her regardless. But if she gets to 35, I don't think she lasts a round. She'll be, she'll be exhausted. Now, you know, then you have a few other, Sadiq Youssef, Diego Lopez. And then, I mean, under the, the early prelim is Jalen Turner, Renato, you know, Renato Moicano, Jessica Andrade is in that. Bobby Green, Jim Miller. The leadoff fight is Cody Garbrandt and Davison Figueredo. Figueredo. That's a that's a hell of a fight. Although I think Figueredo's gonna knock fucking Cody Garbrandt straight out. But overall, this card, yes, from bottom to top, top the, from I think really from bottom to top, it's actually really good in that regard. But the top three fights, the main card to me is like, it's names, it's belts, but then. Eh. I had more excitement to see Dustin Poirier fight Benoit Saint Denis in my realistic. Had a lot more. I was way more excited to see that fight. Way more excited. I'm gonna watch. I love MMA, but if you ask me who I'm picking, I'm picking Pereira. I'm picking. Don't take my picks because my picks usually suck. By the way, I get too emotional about this stuff. Um, Pereira. I'll take Wei Li. I'll take Gaethje, I'll take Oliveira, and I'm going to take Bo Nickel. Obviously, he's minus 3,000, and this guy, I mean, it's just, it's just I'm sorry, it's minus 2,100 now, it went down, my bad. Ooh, look, might, so, might, take advantage game, I mean, of, might take advantage of making them five cents on that one. I might do a five, I might do a five, five parlay there with these, with these fights. I might, you know, for 20 bucks, but, yeah. He degenerate that, gamblers, man. he degenerate gamblers. Thank you for your <laughs> Here's a little week, Rudy. We needed that uh, for the fans who listen and don't know much about MMA. They get to get some insight here. We're going to go off the UFC. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel. Thank mm-hmm. you.